Let's bring in the round table now. I'm joined by Bill Crystal, editor of the Weekly Standard. Jennifer Granholm, former governor of Michigan, now senior advisor to the Ready for Hillary PAC. Peggy Noonan of the Wall Street Journal and Congressman Keith Ellison, co-chair of the House Progressive Caucus. And Bill, let me begin with you. You know Karl Rove uh, pretty well. Was this a shrewd move by Karl or did he kind of overstep? Uh, I don't think it was a particularly shrewd move. I mean, we'll see how Secretary Clinton's health is. She'll be out there campaigning, presumably. Uh, she'll, I, I imagine her health will be fine. But in any case, people can see for themselves. So there's no reason for Karl Rove to speculate about it. One of the things we saw at Jennifer Granholm's, the Clinton camp hit back um, unusually hard uh, on this one. It was the most extensive statement we've seen from, um, from Secretary Clinton's uh, staff responding to any kind of a charge. But, but she will have to address these health questions eventually, correct? Well, I mean, every candidate has to put out their health records, et cetera. And so I'm sure for whoever is running, that will be the case. But this was such a bunch of nonsense. And really, I think it demonstrates how utterly afraid they are of her. And I think for her, when she makes her decision, she will only be elevated by the nonsense that's happening on the other side. I think one of the reasons this happens, though, Keith Ellison and, and, and Jerry Brown talked about it. He said, talked about the risks of a coronation when you're kind of unopposed uh, on the Democratic side. It kind of leaves an open field for the Republicans, and they feel a responsibility to get in there hard and early. Well, you know, I think it's Karl Rove's job to try to say inflammatory, controversial things. I, I don't think Hillary Clinton needs her head examined. I think there might be some other things. <laughs> <laughs> and Peggy Noonan, you remember the, the, this. Well, this is not the first time that age or health has come up oh, uh, my in, in a campaign. Ronald Reagan. <laughs> no. Oh, Bob Dole uh, was in his 70s when he ran for president. John McCain, Ronald Reagan, my old boss. It is standard for... And it's appropriate for your age and your health to be considered uh, by the voters. I don't think, I, I agree with Bill, I, I, I think your point, I don't think it was, was helpful for a political operative as opposed to journalists to begin this whole uh, story. But I also think in a funny way it'll work for Mrs. Clinton's benefit after all. She's got a book tour coming up in June, that means these topics will come up then when she's selling the book, when she's doing network specials, when she's feeling fresh and perky and can knock it back with prepared lines. So I think it's fine, but, but sure, it's an early move of 2016. We saw a, a, a lot of previews of 2016 this week, Bill Crystal. not only those response to Karl Rove, but uh, Secretary Clinton giving a big uh, speech on foreign policy, talking about our hard choices, taking credit for tough Iran sanctions, talking about the economy. And I think most uh, noticeable in her speeches about the economy, she seemed to focus more on the Clinton years than the Obama years. Huh. Yeah, the American dream, she said, feels further and further out of reach. She's been president for the last six years, you know, as this dream has gotten further and further out of me. She mentions President Obama once in this long speech on domestic policy, praises her husband's presidency, but basically seems to indict the Obama administration. And I think that's where she'll try to go. Pretty hard, though, to run away from an administration in which you've played a part. She was Secretary of State. She was part of this administration. Her record is going to be the issue in the campaign, not her health. And secondly, she said in the speech, we'll need big ideas to address these questions. I think that is something Republicans should welcome. Let's have a big ideas election in 2016. Who, who, who has fundamental, uh, who's in favor of fundamental reforms in health care, tax code, banking, and other things? I, I completely disagree that she was somehow dissing the Obama administration. But she certainly has a, the Clinton years were good years for people and of course she's going to remind them of that of course the obama administration's been digging out of a hole that was left under the his mm -hmm. predecessor so you know and look how far we've come we're now at an unemployment rate that was less than when he took over so there you've is now really you've now defended president obama more than secretary clinton did in her, in her <laughs> entire 30 saying, in her entire 30 she minute speech to defend. she was part of that administration it's a continuum but of course she's going to remind people of how good things were under clinton can i tell you i think what mrs clinton's speech did was tell us what Democrats themselves think of the president's popularity and the president's standing. They are beginning to distance. I think that she was just talking about her own chops. I think it's clear that the president has done a very good job given where he started. And, you know, the president has been talking about economic populism. I'm glad she did, too. I mean, when you see 150 cities all over this country, low wage workers out protesting for better wages, I think that that is the thing to but, tap but into. I think that that's where we need to go. But, but are progressives like you going to have to keep the pressure on? We saw Bernie Sanders, the senator from Vermont, talking about challenging her just to keep these issues in play. Well, you know, absolutely we're going to have to talk about 
focusing on working Americans and how we can make sure that people who work every day, who get home and are dirty and sweaty, uh, can make a good living. We got to talk about those things because that's really where the American people's head is. And I'm going to tell you, any Democrat who wants to be successful should talk about raising the minimum wage, making sure that the health care bill gets implemented so it can benefit people, talking about retirement security. And these low wage workers fa uh, striking at McDonald's, I mean, that's a sign that we've got to do something in this economy. For folks who are really if, I, if I could just say one word, just remind you, Secretary Clinton said the American dream of upward mobility feels further and further out of reach. She didn't say it was terribly out of reach in 2008, but we've come back some. She, it can, she believes. You know, you could snatch out, argued, you, Bill, you could snatch out a little phrase take a look and at try the to turn speech, it into Keith. something. Take but a the, look at the whole but, speech, but look, Keith. But it's, it, a, it's an intelligent speech. It's no. an analysis of the problems we face. It just seems but, to say that President Obama hasn't done no, anything. No, no it's really, not about Obama. Yeah, it's, it's, it, is about, it is about the 2002-2003 tax cuts. It is about unpaid for wars. It is about the uh, the trickle-down economics, which you guys championed. That she voted for. That's not what it's about, actually. Go ahead, Peggy. Just quickly, I I think the Republicans right now are do, doing something very quietly that I think I would love to see the Democrats doing. Republicans, senators, governors are actually talking about governance. They're talking about ideas to change America, to bring the economy back. I see the Democrats not doing that, not doing ideas, not doing let me bring, formulations let me bring shut down the government for 16 days. Oh, they almost threatened on. a default on the day. I mean, they've been doing a lot of bad things. But, but I am moved, not hearing moved. ideas we from have, the Democrats. I am hearing anything complaints. in the House of Representatives. Let me bring that to Jennifer Granholm, though, because isn't that the biggest challenge if Hillary Clinton runs to be new, to be fresh, to have big ideas for the future. No, I don't think it's hard for her at all. She has been articulating that, and there's a lot of great Democratic ideas out there that the president has put out, but it's been blocked by the Republicans in the House. So true. I mean, the reason why things are falling farther and farther behind is because the House is not moving on the stuff that the president, you can shake your head, but, but, but <laughs> which the, the Congress, which legislation Congress has, has not the Democratic been Senate moving. passed? Give me an example. Immigration Give reform. Give me an example. Immigration reform. Would be a they huge asset that. to the that economy. That would help the economy tremendously. Oh, really? CBO says it would, it would increase jobs and do a lot of good for a lot of people. I can you know, tell you that's what folks in my district are talking about. We're going to have to take a break right now.